So the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance, um, it is officially non-partisan organization, so we're not um, Republican or Democrat or Libertarian. It's uh, an alliance of all of those uh, different factions. Uh, we produce the, the gold standard uh, every week. Um, at the beginning of the uh, session, we hand these out. Uh, it's a voting guide so that the, the reps know uh, what the Liberty argument is on each uh, bill that we've selected. And then uh, at the end of the, um, the legislative session, we put together a, a scorecard the Liberty Rating, which um, will identify a letter grade for each uh, rep so they um, can look themselves up and find out if they're an A, an F, or even a constitutional threat. And we've got a couple of those. Um, right here, Keen. <clears throat> still? I know we used to. I don't know if we still did. Let me see. Probably. So that the gold the standard Delmar gets printed Delmar. every week? Well, every week that there's a session. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, that's awesome activism. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, where else does that happen? Mm -hmm. Nowhere else. Yes, yes. It doesn't happen anywhere. Right. I mean, so um, like it's, it's pretty comprehensive. So I mean, we're making okay, sure Keen's that okay, he's got all these. That each rep has. <laughs> it's got better. That's better than we've ever been. All these. Yeah. All these. Can we take credit for that? <laughs> <laughs> there's a couple D pluses. What about Delmar? Wait, all D's or all D's? Because that's my favorite. Everybody has a letter grade of D Phillips that's a state D. rep in key. I'm talking, about, I'm talking about our new all D's. So, how are you guys with uh, Cynthia Chase? I mean, is that... Because uh, I've heard that she's she's been kind of won over. I don't know if I've heard oh, that. Right. 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 I mean, she seems friendly towards me. So, that's good. Uh, yeah, she's not at least... She's you know, co-sponsored some not horrible legislation this year. Oh, cool. Um, so, in order to create the Gold Center, we need to uh, have all 800 bills that are in the session reviewed beforehand. Uh, that's a pretty big task, so that's where everyone can get involved. But you need to be a member to do that of the NHLA. So, is everyone here um, that's interested in becoming a bill reviewer or a member? Um, I'm a life member, but I don't know if I want to be a bill reviewer. <laughs> so, I'm here to it's find optional. that out. It's optional. It's <laughs> optional. Um, I too am a life member. Yes, thank you. So if you want to <coughs> join the NHLA, uh, you want to go to nhliberty.org. Up here, there's a join the new section. What does membership cost in the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance? It's uh, free for basic membership. Uh -huh. That's what I have. Basic. So if you want there's to no be, reason not to, then. There's no reason not to, too. If you want to review bills, the basic membership is free. And um, I think the life membership was only a hundred dollars. Hundred bucks. Right, and you can subscribe for two years for uh, twenty dollars. That's a pretty good deal. All right. So I need to log in. Um, I can remember. So. If you want, I can unplug the HDMI cable from this and hook it up to your laptop if that'll be easier for you. Uh, oh, at this point, I'll plug these up. So, uh, Ian, I heard that you were, you gave a pretty amazing testimony the other day. Uh, it wasn't that amazing, show. but <laughs> it was, you know, the only, you know, strike at the root one where I suggested that the entire liquor commission be shut down. Mm -hmm. um, one lady liked it, Pam, I think her name was Pam. Pam Tucker. Tucker. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty awesome. I'm sorry I missed that one. Yeah, and another uh, rep complimented me on the way out, so it's always nice when that happens. A couple of those bills um, were bills that I had introduced uh, last year. Oh, great. Just, they died. Come back summer. around. Yeah. That's cool that they come back even without you there to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, Kevin Bloom is the man behind those bills, so at least the two that I'm thinking of. Okay. Yeah, so he's so there was the labeling bill uh, for, there was a, like a prohibition in New Hampshire on having children uh, on a label for a beer or any, any right. alcoholic beverage. And that was the one where the testimony went on for an hour and I got up there and I basically said, this is ridiculous that you, know, you guys have been discussing this for an hour 
and you know, we don't need this and live for your die state. And, I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but get rid of the liquor commission. And I don't know, maybe someday someone will propose that. I think it should be proposed. I think that there's a lot of sentiment for reforming <clears throat> the liquor commission. Sure. They, they see how, how much uh, an obstruction it is. But the approach that they took with that bill was, was better. So we learned from last time when um, we were trying to strip the liquor commission of its power. Uh, to make decisions like this as far as advertising. But then, um, that's more libertarian, I suppose. But then this year, the approach is to just give them the discretion. So they don't, if they want to follow the letter of the law, they can just say, well, we don't have to ban this product. So in a sense, it's giving them more power. But it's giving them the power to, <laughs> giving them the power to uh, approve something, whereas before, the law said that they had to uh, deny it. So I mean, we learn something each each time the bill goes through the process. Mm -hmm. um, so that will expand liberty, uh, a tiny little amount. Um, but in order for us to you know show up at the committee and testify um, uh, for most of the bills, we need to do some research uh, beforehand. So that's where the bill review comes in. That's that's one of the big uh, problems. We want to make sure that the bill reviews are actually put to uh, some <coughs> use. To that um, the research that goes into this uh, actually. Uh, ends up influencing the bill in the committee and then uh, the gold standard. Um, so a lot of the bills, we don't have an expert like uh, Kevin Bloom uh, uh, has such a, a grasp of this particular bill that we were talking about. Um, all, a lot of these are just uh, are completely new to us. We don't know what the legislative intent is or what the what some unintended consequences of the bill could be. Mm -hmm. So after you've signed into uh, the website, you've joined as either a basic member or uh, if you want to sign up for a full membership, um, whatever, you want to uh, send an email to me or to uh, the membership director to get the bill review status. Because it's not automatic. Once you have the status, um, you'll be able to see this section here uh, and the unreviewed bills uh, section. Uh, so you can click on that and see that we have uh, 210 bills that haven't been reviewed yet. This is for uh, 2015. You can go all the way back to 2009. And then um, what I want to try to encourage people to do is to pick a committee and then um, review uh, or stay within that, that committee. Hmm. Um, because we need to, I mean, it's all voluntary. You can pick whatever you want. But, um, Are there we, some we committees need... that have more reviewers than others to where there would be people needed for certain? Yeah, things? well. Like criminal justice, there's a lot of there's bills that go to that. that go through there. Yeah, but then on the other hand, we also have a lot of interest in in those bills. So maybe you want to pick something like on commerce or um, something that's. Could not, you blow up the text? Maybe one or two notches. Um, control plus. <clears throat> what about the idea of looking cool. over Thanks. the bills that are going to be uh, in committee that week and picking bills that have that are about to be um, you know in committee and, and uh, reviewing those because they're sitting there and they're like just about uh, yeah that's haven't, haven't been reviewed yet yeah. yeah since you brought it up I'll, I'll go into how you can find out what's going to be well it's also up on there where it says action date and it will show if they've got a committee hearing that's been scheduled well, we have this section on the website um, that shows you the upcoming public hearings in the House and the Senate. So uh, these have been reviewed. Um, this one has a ranking of uh, negative 17.5. This one here, uh, I believe this one takes uh, all the money that goes into the uh, highway funds, the, the road toll, and just dumps that into the general fund, so it wouldn't be a user fee anymore. Or it would have no semblance to one anymore. That's negative uh, 22. So you can see here on the 20th, that's going to be uh, oh, cool. Heard so that. why is HB 15 listed like six times there? It's a glitch in the system. We haven't fixed it yet um, because Every time you review a bill, it generates uh, a new hearing date. So, uh, okay. um, if you have IT knowledge and you want to volunteer for the NHLA to 
fix things like that, that would be, be great. But there is an IT committee already, they know about that, and they're trying to fix it. So this is useful. Um, you can select something that has an impact of you know, plus or minus uh, whatever. And within the next 7, 14 days, whatever. What's the numerical impact? What is that? Well, we'll get into that um, after we uh, complete a review. Um, so every bill gets a numerical number from uh, zero, or actually negative um, 37 to positive 37. So it's so within that range of bills going to, to fall. It's either anti or pro liberty. Um, just depending on what we do in the review process. And there's a whole bunch of questions we have to answer. Um, so the other place to get information about upcoming bills, uh, you might be aware of it, is the, uh, the House uh, calendar. So this link on the website goes to the general court. And uh, calendars are listed here. Um, there's not going to be much there right now. So if we could look at something from that's the agenda, yeah, that's true. Um, Steve, why is it coming up like this? IT man. What is the book coming up like what? It's multiple. Are you on a tablet? No, it's like it's doing on that tablet. It's on the website. Oh. I'm not sure. I didn't write the date, please. So the, the house calendar will uh, just tell the refs about um, what the bills are that are going to be voted on. This is a little blurb um, that the, uh, the refs write, so it's a little summary. Uh, so that, <coughs> Generally, that's agreed upon by committee, correct? Well, the little have, blurb of the bill? Right, you will have the minority and the uh, majority position in the blurb. So all of these are on the consent calendar, I believe, so I don't know if you have opposing viewpoints. The consent calendars where they don't. What is exactly what does that mean? Well, there's no one on the committee thought that it was uh, had any opposition at all, so they just put it on the consent calendar. And uh, at the beginning of the session day, there will be one voice vote to say it was the consent calendar adopted, and and um, in that one vote, maybe like a hundred bills are sent over to the Senate. Uh, so or just, killed completely, depending on if it's right, ITL depending, or OTP. Depending on the committee recommendation. <laughs> uh, wait, wait, wait. So the consent calendar is includes bills that are... If, if a committee says, kill this bill, and everybody on the committee says, kill the bill, okay. then they'll put it on the consent calendar. All right. And if everybody on a committee says, pass a bill, that's also on the consent calendar. So oh. shall we adopt the consent calendar, meaning every bill that's on here winds up with the committee recommendation. Unless somebody you motions to off, remove right? something from the consent calendar. Yeah. yeah, any one rep can remove a bill from the consent right. calendar. Oh. So. Um, and that's happened a couple times when there's, I think this uh, bill to uh, prohibit um, displaying your ballot, I think that was on the consent calendar, someone pulled that off, that was uh, caught at the last minute. That was recent. You pulled off the, or uh, was it you or Smith that pulled off the ballot access improvement bill last year? I know you got the division vote on it. Right. But it was probably Smith that did the, um, okay. pull it off the consent calendar. Did he get reelected? Yes. Unfortunately, he is now the chair of the Transportation Committee. He's, he's responsible <coughs> for this uh, mobile device ban. I, I want to hang this around his <gasps> neck. I mean, the Speaker of the House went on public radio and said that even libertarians were in support of this uh, oh, uh, no. mobile device ban. And he was the libertarian that she was referring to. Um, because <laughs> he calls he, himself a libertarian? Well, yeah. Oh. And he, at least a lot of people have this impression of him. It's, huh. it's completely it was, Well, Steve Valancourt called himself a libertarian, too. Did well, anyone was propose to repeal that? Steve, Stephen Smith. Uh, I believe so. Oh, good. I think it's rolled back. Um, I'm not sure what the status of that bill is because that was Jasper's bill and um, you know, his speaker. Um, so, yeah, real quickly, the, uh, the minority report is this bottom part. You see Calvin Pratt, he's a, a good liberty person. Uh, he's, he's writing a blurb for the minority. The majority is written by uh, Lucy Weber. Um, and the uh, committee recommendation is on to pass. So the committee took a vote, 11 to 8, they think it should pass. Um, that happened this week? Or are we looking at what's current? No, this is no that's from last year. Oh, okay. okay. Because we don't Just have because there's a bunch of stuff on that. 
Uh, yeah, I wanted to show you what it looks like. Um, um, we don't have uh, a house se a session scheduled yet. Um, so now if you're... Dan McGuire is the prime sponsor on the uh, repeal of prohibitions to use mobile electronic devices. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Uh, Dan McGuire, Donald LeBron, James Bellinger, Dick Marston, Daniel Itzi, Alfred Dallasaro, and Mike Sylvia. Some pretty good liberty people there. Um, so where are we? There, there was a couple of notices here. Um, you see the, the schedule that shows you what's happening. Uh, Wednesday, uh, there's this committee and um, this may be um, a bad calendar to choose, but that's the section of the calendar that you look at for to find out which bills are becoming coming up for a hearing mm -hmm. the next um, the next week. Uh, and you can pass this around if you guys want to see what uh, what looks like in person. Late March, that would be that uh, crossover period, right, where bills are starting to come out of the Senate and go to the yeah, House this, and vice versa. Yeah, in time, most of the bills have already had their hearings, so. Um, that's a bad example, but um, what I wanted to say about this uh, blurb, um, that's what they call this, this little summary. Um, if any of you are interested in drafting one of these, we can uh, set, submit that to one of the, um, the Liberty Friendly Raps on the committee. And that's very helpful because anyone that makes a motion is obligated to do this blurb, and a lot of people don't want to make the motion. A lot of raps just mm -hmm. you know, don't want to have that extra work. Um, but if we can, and the motion uh, is to do what? Either way, like the first person to make a motion, that's the motion that gets voted on. So motion to ITP or whatever, or okay, right, ought to pass. Yeah. Um, so if it's a, a pro-liberty bill, you want to be the first one to make a motion and say ought to pass. So, so the you committee can, can vote why. on that before they vote on the ITL, uh -huh. because if it gets a, a successful vote of ITL, then it's going to be very difficult to overturn that on the House floor. What is ITL? Uh, an expedient to legislate, uh, which kill basically it. kills the bill. So uh, that's an extra thing um, on top of bill reviewing, if you want to volunteer for that. It's something that we need to get on top of. What's it called again? Um, blurbs. These are blurbs. Oh, that's yeah. just the term that, that is used. So you can just draft a, a little argument uh, for the bill, give it to the friendly rep, and say, you know, will you make a motion on to pass on this liberty friendly bill? And, and then they submit that for their blurb. If they, yeah, if they that, like that saves them a lot of work. They'll be much more willing to uh, stick their neck out and do that if they have that in their backpack. And that could also be inverted. Is it up to not pass? Yes, of course. Yeah, if it's a it's a bad bill, you want to kill it, uh, you need someone on the committee to, to make that uh, recommendation. All right, so now you know uh, how to find the bills that are coming up. Um, like I said, you can select by the, by the committee or just go by the list. Uh, and there is House and Senate on there. Yep. Uh, I wonder if it wouldn't just be simpler to <coughs> go through uh, an already reviewed bill. Let's do that first and then, and then uh, do a review one. a one that has a bill. Let's see. There's one that I would like you to take a look at, and yeah. if you wouldn't mind doing uh, do control F. I, I don't remember the, uh, the bill number. Uh, it was about uh, life begins at conception. Oh yeah, I saw that. And the reason I would like you to look at it. Let's go on. Hmm. Well, go click down and not find the page, I think. Oh, it's not here. Or also click, oh, so click somewhere on the page where it's not hi nothing's highlighted right now. Like there's a word highlighted. I don't know if that's screwing it up. Well, life, end of life decisions. No, 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 no. Just, it, just hit, type in life, there, there were only two, so type in life again and then hit enter. So, I initially reviewed that and it came up with a negative score. And then one of the sponsors of the legislation re-reviewed it so that it was a much smaller negative and now it looks like somebody else has reviewed it so that it's completely neutral. Well, and they actually have written in that legislation the intent is to 
basically criminalize abortion. Okay, well let's, so you can click, you can find the bill and then... Um, um, so it seems we'll as though people keep re-reviewing the, re the bill so that it's not an anti-liberty bill. How many times has this changed? Uh, I know of two changes. That's interesting. I mean, I mean, if it keeps happening, then we'll just have to revoke someone's bill review status, I suppose. I mean, because I mean, there's a very clear uh, policy on uh, on this particular issue. Right. Um, I seem to recall you mentioning something about there's like two subjects that are not touched or something. I mean, one is right. abortion, yes. and one is something else, and the death penalty. Card. Oh yeah. So yeah. So <clears throat> after J.R. Howell, who's one of the co-sponsors, reviewed it. He put a note in there like, do not touch. But now it's been reviewed again. <laughs> well, he's the prime sponsor, and he's, he's writing in do not touch. I yes. mean, that, that means it's a do not touch issue. Right. So, I mean, that's correct. I mean, he's right, but it was reviewed once more since then, because it went from negative two after he reviewed it, to now it's completely zero. Uh, this turns my stomach. I don't want to read this one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so, but anyway, you can click here to read the bill, and then if you wanted to review it, you would. Um, You've got a different title window. Um, you just click there. So this is the read-only version of the bill. Do not touch issue. Um, there's a button at the bottom. That's what you should. You should just click that, and it should take care of it. So what are the do not touch issues, abortion and uh, death penalty, and is there any others? Right. No, I don't think that there are any uh, others uh, currently, so... And oh, I, okay, so I would like to explains why he changed it, so that it shows completely neutral instead of a negative. Yeah, yeah, so... Um, if you have questions on a, on a bill like that, there's something fishy going on, just send me uh, a message. And, I don't, I don't think that there's too much of that happening. Um, we want to try to get as many people involved as possible, and I think that's going to. What will result is that there'll be some controversies about how a bill should be reviewed. But this is you have to keep in mind. This is the first step. This is like triage. We just want to determine what are the bills that are the most dangerous, so we can be there in committee to fight them. But what are the bills that we need to be there to uh, influence to? advocate for that are pro-liberty. Uh, and then once we have that, we can spend more work on them. So uh, keep that in mind. So any, any of these look interesting? Establish, establishing a state minimum hourly rate. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Last so. reviewed by Daryl W. Perry. <laughs> <laughs> So you can see here in the read-only version. Why don't we go ahead and just click on the review. Well, for the first step when you, when you do this, you want to uh, just take a look at what the bill says. You can do that before you decide whether or not to commit to reviewing it. Uh, if you haven't read a bill before. Uh, the title is up here. HB is for House Bill, of course. Um, it'll be SB uh, for Senate Bill. Some of the others are uh, CA, CR, Constitutional Amendment. Uh, we have the There was one that was an here. HA. What does that mean? Yeah, I, that was the first time I saw that. I got rid of that one. It, um, it was about basically firing some people at the Department of Right, Education. but no, what, what does HA stand for? Because I know HB stands for House Bill, CACR is Constitutional it Amendment, was something. It House uh, Announcement or something. So it has nothing... Okay. It has, it has no teeth. I mean, it, it, it wouldn't really change anything from what I understand. Because okay. the House, the, the house can't just house decide advisory. to fire someone in the executive branch. I mean, that's... I mean, but they can, they can just make some kind of speech about it. But it doesn't actually change anything. So we're removal of certain state officials in the Department of Education. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if he has a particular grudge. I don't know what the story is. 
this Lars Christensen is the same guy that um, he tried to have the uh, the house uh, revisit a court case uh, for a, a child molester um, who felt that um, he didn't have justice. Um, I, I don't agree that the house should really be wading into things, uh, overturning judicial decisions. Oh, there's the one. I, I'm not sure if it's the thing that you're talking about, there is the thing to impeach a certain judge because the court case against Bill Gardner didn't go the way they wanted it to. <laughs> is this uh, something that you're involved in? No! No? Uh, I have no clue what this case is, but there's a bill that got filed to impeach a judge. What does that say that uh, I assume that, that you were behind a bill to impeach Bob Bryant? Or, or, uh, Gardner. Um, is everyone familiar with the, what a bill looks like, or should I go through this? Um, I mean, this is um, just basic orientation. Um, if you see the bold, it's going to be uh, something added to the bill. Uh, just, if it's struck through, that's not going to be deleted from the bill. Yeah, so there's already a section of law where it outlines a minimum hourly wage. Is that the Robertson? I thought there wasn't one? one in New Hampshire. Uh, I guess I guess they um, this says state it, law says that it's whatever the federal law is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like so this take this seven twenty five like, an hour for the Google's. So if you if you yes. ability to do it, that will be a, a link and it will go to the RSA. Yeah. This Whereas goes if to, you're not a bill reviewer, the link isn't there. Uh, I guess that's true. Uh, bill reviewer know. can't see this. Uh, I mean, if you're not a bill reviewer, you can't see this part of the NHLA website. Mm -hmm. But of course, think it's a wait. Of course, no, the, the RSA is. You, can't see, like, you, you, you can see the text of the bills. The, the link, the, the RSA link, is what I was thinking. Give me a second, and I'll think pull it up in a uh, different browser. Yeah, I don't see why you shouldn't be able to uh, see yeah. the text. I actually bill. It's all use, public information. I, if I'm looking for what bills are up, I, I usually check the NHLA website because it's easier to I think it's easier to navigate than the state website for sure. Well, maybe that's Yeah, if you're looking at the bill on the state, uh, state website, they don't link to that's the RSA. Right. That must be what I'm thinking. Okay, well, I mean, while we're talking about it, there's a great site um, <laughs> that you might want to take note of. Uh, this has hyperlinks in it. I mean, it's the same content. It's just that now Ooh. I will add uh, hyperlinks where where we have uh, a section of law that is referencing some other section of law. You can just click on the link. Anyway, gencourt.org if you want to, <laughs> I don't to demonstrate it to you. All right, so this is what the the current the bill would change. It would change this chapter. Um, so you want to be sure that you read this to get the context. Other, otherwise, a lot of times it, this isn't going to make sense. If you just read the, the bill, it's hard to make sense of what it actually changes without actually reading the whole the whole statute. It looks like the, uh, the bold face here is the $16, and that's the primary change. Hmm. And then the effective date, uh, it'll take effect 60 days after its passage. So that's section uh, one and that's section two. So we want to go ahead and review it. We've decided. So let me just click view. And you'll be shown this box here is how to quit. If you at any time you decide that, that you've changed your mind, you're not ever going to be able to finish this, uh, you just quit by clicking on that because then it releases it for someone else to, to work on. If you don't do that, then it'll be tied up in the system. So if you don't do that, it'll be like a pause and you can come back. It'll to reserve it. it for you. Oh, okay. yeah, so don't. It's, it's, a, it's a 
lock on the entry, so only you can edit it. So basically, the reason for it is if you it, each one of those like summary is a, just a field, and if you add something to the summary, and then Ian edits something in the summary at the same time, you save it, and then Ian saves it, your entries will get wiped out because it'll only save Ian's. That's why you lock the person out. Yeah. Yeah, so you can go back after the review is completed and, and re-review the bell. If someone does accidentally yeah. leave something locked, is there an easy way to like force them out? Yeah, the or does the it time have a way of doing that. Yeah. Do you have to like send an email? Hey, unlock this entry again. It automatically generates emails so that uh, we know about it. Oh. So I mean, it'll just it'll just linger at the bottom of the page uh, until it's completed. So you want to pick. Uh, a topic. This one is for contracts. It doesn't have to be just one uh, topic. Uh, they also select infrastructure, small business. Well, this was your um, build, though, right? Do you, yes. Do you want to walk us through um, um, your reasoning for? Yeah, well, I selected small business because there isn't just a generic business uh, category. Mm -hmm. And this will most definitely affect small businesses, probably the hardest. Uh, contracts, because it involves uh, you know, employment contracts, and I believe infrastructure, because it's government like setting a rate that deals with contracts. That's fine. That helps to sort the bills. I don't. I think infrastructure, in my mind, brings to mind something like. A bill that the public works would handle, but um, well, it would also affect government contract because generally government contracts they pay people a rate X plus minimum wage. So this would greatly increase the amount of money that government workers wind up getting. Uh, it's anti-liberty because you know raising minimum wage and dictating that is clearly anti-liberty. Right. Well, let's pause <laughs> there for a moment. So. Um, you have a drop down menu here where you, uh, it will start at unsure, but you can select anti neutral or pro liberty. Um, if you're unsure, you can just leave it neutral. Uh, we should mention about the summary before we go on. Um, the default setting is to just copy what uh, is on the general court website, just the default title. Yeah. And often and that's really general. Is the default title on this was establishing a state minimum hourly rate. I added setting it at $16 per hour or that set in the federal minimum wage law. That way people it's much more useful. know a little bit more about what it is. Okay. So this, uh, this impact here, this has a, a large well, impact on the numerical score that the bill is going to have. It's pretty much a multiplier. Yeah, exactly. Um, but it's also very subjective. Um, so what I would say is that you want to avoid, you know, looking at what the PR value of potential passage of a bill would be, and and focus on the, what the actual effects would be on the citizens if uh, this bill would pass. What would the actual change be uh, to everyday life? Um, so I think that 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 certainly would have a, a high impact. Um, on everyone in the state. Um, and then a study committee, let's mention that um, a lot of times a bill will just create study committees, like a bill to establish a committee to study elderly driving. You know. So all that will do is cause a bunch of state reps to meet in the fall and sit around a table and talk about you know, how their grandpa crashed into a tree. And it doesn't really change the law at all. So it can just click study committee and then submit this bill because uh, submit the review if that was the case. Because we don't need to spend resources fighting a study committee. That's not going to change anything. Mm -hmm. But um, is that part thing of study committee? Yes. It is. Could that be amended for legalization? <clears throat> In theory, but most likely a study committee bill will not be amended to actually be binding. Yeah, it's most of the time it'll be just the reverse. You have a, a bill that would make an actual change, and it'll turn it into a study. Yeah, a plight with killing it will need to turn it into a study so that, um, well, that 
can be used tactically uh, because if a bill is introduced and fails, a bill of the same topic cannot be introduced the next year. Mm -hmm. um, so if you change it to a study committee and send it through, that allows uh, a bill to be reintroduced in the same topic. So that's another thing. Now, do, does that prohibition uh, of you can't have the same bill two years in a row, does that apply from <coughs> one legislature to the next? Like last year technically was a different legislature than this year. No, it's just, um, I mean, one legislature can't bind the succeeding legislature, uh, legislature, so. Well, they do that all the time. The pay grade is binding of all future legislatures. Well, that's in the Constitution. If that's what right, mean. but no, I, I'm just saying, like, you know, there are House rules that exist that. You know, like there are things that bind future legislatures. Right, but they can't really. I mean, they try to, but but I mean, the legislature isn't bound to uh, uphold them at all. They could just decide not to obey them, and they frequently do. And, um, the situation with the House rules. I mean, there was a period of, of time after Jasper was elected that that there were no rules for the House. Um, I, I was a little uh, uncertain about that area. I mean, are the uh, previous rules still binding? I don't think so. Um, you, uh, if anyone is unfamiliar, the House rules were recently changed. The NHLA did a, a gold standard to um, advocate that the rules be changed to allow weapons back in mm -hmm. the State House. Um, and there was also um, concealed weapons. I thought it was only on the House floor. Right. House but floor, gallery, the gallery. antechamber. Well, that's the only area that the House actually has jurisdiction to make rules on. Uh, but there are no other restrictions anywhere else in the State House uh, as far as weapons go. Um, I, I was happy to see that the language that we used in the gold standard, which was very deliberate, um, it was um, the discreet possession of weapons. And it's not this one, it's uh, so, um, but that, that was later picked up uh, by the newspaper. So I don't think I've seen that particular formulation before, you know, so, so people are reading this thing. Um, now, that bill that I mentioned, the pod bill, that's, is that HB 150? I just yes. didn't want to just rattle off the bill that I didn't Yeah, find. yeah, that's to create a committee to study the possibility of legalizing cannabis. <laughs> Maybe at some point in the future, possibly. That could be a very interesting study committee, you know, people need to do some empirical research. And Tasker needs to be on that study committee. Okay. Well, I have a lot of diversions here, but um, why don't you walk us through the, uh, the bullet points? <laughs> okay, so the first one is civil rights, and I asked the question, does this bill protect the rights of the people or supplant them with a new government granted privilege? I put that it demeans or eliminates rights because it certainly you know, demeans the rights of the owners of businesses by preventing them from contracting with people for possibly maybe less than $16 an hour. I, I get into that a little more in my description of the bill. Uh, personal responsibility, I put not applicable because it doesn't really affect one way or the other really? uh, responsibility. Yeah, it, but I mean, if you're some schmo working minimum wage somewhere, you're you're kind of relying on the government to give you a raise. And that's what I've heard straight from coworkers' mouths when it does go up. I mean, you know, talking about distractions and diversions, but I don't know how to, you know, like if somebody was reviewing this after you, would it be like somebody would go to you to be like, hey, this is, you know, you're, this is a big aspect of this reviewing the bill or just leave it the way it is? Well, these, these bullet points have a less of an effect on the uh, score, the numerical score. Um, the purpose of them is to get you to think in, from all sides of the, of the issue uh, about the bill. And so each individual bill reviewer is going to have a different take on it. You know, so you might say um, it promotes protectionism or victimhood. But Daryl doesn't uh, think so. Um, I, I, I could certainly you know, see the argument there. But it's not that much of an impact which one is actually. You can also. Com not compared to uh, changing this up here, for oh. example. 
Yeah. You could also, I mean, you could, on the same coin, you could also claim that it, it violates rights to property, probably. Um, you could, say it, you could say it's unconstitutional, probably. But about any other type of bill, if you run into that situation, like I'm reviewing a bill for the first time, and he's already reviewed this bill, or he's already reviewed a different type of bill, and there's like a vast, not vast, but there's like some kind of disagreement. If it's on this point, it doesn't really make that much of an impact in the bill review. Mm -hmm. Is that what? Right, it's not. So I'm not really worried about this one. It's, what you it's could do, um, well, once you get further on, you can put down um, in, uh, a few sentences about, you know, well, we were unsure about, you know, how we should uh, select uh, personal responsibility, um, which is, you know, keeps that objection um, so that we can address it later when we're advocating for or against this bill, you know. Um, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but what I was in the bill review class that you did online a couple weeks ago, I think you had said that if you're not really sure strongly one way or the other, err on not applicable. Yeah, I I would agree with that. Yeah, just uh, say and I, because that's not going to uh, impact the bill. Um, it's just not change anything. So uh, for clarity, even though it appears that it's very clear. I put duplicitous or vague, and here's the reason why. Can you pull the okay. text of the bill up again? So it says that, unless otherwise provided by statute, <coughs> no person, firm, or corporation shall employ an, an employee at an hourly rate lower than, oh, okay, lower than $16 or that set forth in the federal minimum wage law as amended. But it doesn't say the lowest of the minimum or the lowest of the higher of those numbers. So it's sort of vague as far as, you know, could I still hire somebody for $7.25 or must it be $16 an hour? Well, the legalese can be very confusing sometimes. Right, that's so why I put it as duplicitous and vague because it could be interpreted either way. But, I mean, do you still agree with that now after, after rereading it? I mean, the rate lower than $16 an hour or that set in the federal... Yeah, it's it still... It, the answer should probably be changed to... Um, it should either say of, whichever is greater or whichever is lower. Or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like after... After minimum wage law, right? Yeah, uh, whichever is higher. Well, I think they phrased it this way so that if the federal minimum wage for some reason was above sixteen dollars an hour, that a change to this law wouldn't be needed. Um, that's a hard fighting prospect. But <laughs> if the federal minimum wage was eighteen, um, there would be a conflict instantly with the New Hampshire law that says that to be paid sixteen. So. Um, I think that's the way it, why it's worded that way. Um, yeah, I, I don't know of a better wording for it, and it, that, that's why I put duplicitous or vague, because it is up for interpretation, and anybody could interpret it however they wanted to. Uh -huh. Okay, well that's fine, and when you have a situation like that, again, just make a note of it and and down, I, down I below. Did. Yeah. Uh, and then on accountability, I put not applicable, constitutionality. Yeah, arguably it's unconstitutional, but you know, courts are going to decide that you know, states can set a minimum wage. Yeah, and one thing about the Constitution, uh, if you do decide that it's legal or unconstitutional, um, you want to make a reference to that part of the Constitution in this, uh, in this box here. Um, because we need to know what you're thinking. It doesn't really, I mean, almost everything is unconstitutional, but we, it's not useful unless we can argue uh, specifically what part of the Constitution violates. So there's a helpful link right there to the New Hampshire Constitution. I would say that it, you can equally uh, use the federal Constitution. Um, Why would anybody want to? That looks horrible. You really <laughs> prefer the New Hampshire Constitution over the Federal Constitution? Well, the New Hampshire Constitution is slightly better 
And based on original intent, the federal constitution does not nor should not apply to any government other than the U.S. federal government. So why should I say that New Hampshire state law should apply or be in line with a document that you know, was never intended for New Hampshire to abide by? Uh, I'll, I'll nominate you for the you know, Supreme Court if I am president. <laughs> um, so, uh, but increases bureaucracy or regulation. Uh, fiscal impact, as I understand, the fiscal impact is uh, it's supposed to regard like government spending, uh, mm -hmm. not private. So that's why I put none. Well, although it definitely would have a negative. Well, this is the effect on private uh, citizens. So, can I ask something? Um, you know those numbers you were looking at, and it was like one negative something for the, the ratings of the bills? Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what, what things here affect, I mean, you, you pointed out that some, some of these questions affect that number less than others. Which ones affect it most greatly? I, I didn't make the, I haven't done the website, I didn't build it, so I don't know. Uh, What's but then there's some kind of calculation just, of if you put like a positive for everything and then high, then it's going to get the highest score. If you only put a you know positive for half of the things and high uh, for pro liberty, then it's going to get like a medium score. Yeah. So I think from experience, I've seen that one of these sections here will be about three points each. That's what I think happens. Um, a lot of times you'll have a bill that uh, you'll mark as uh, honest and clear, uh, even though it's totally anti-liberty. I mean, you still won't give it credit for being honest and clear, you know. Um, so you want to find its pros as well as its cons so that we can better analyze the bill. Um, so the fiscal impact, um, this is an interesting question because it's regarding the minimum wage, but the question is, directed on what the change will be on private citizens. Um, now that's talking about taxes or costs, not in, term, not in terms of you know, welfare benefits. So, um, yeah. yeah, so we could certainly change that to either low negative or considerably negative. Uh, you know, it depends on you know how far you're looking out to determine if it's considerable or low, but it, it, it's definitely a negative fiscal impact. Well, I suppose those people that still have jobs, it would be very positive, wouldn't it? But you're increasing the minimum wage. Everyone's salary must be. Right, but then you know the price of <coughs> the price of everything goes up, and then you know the sixteen dollar minimum wage and. Five years, people. We need to make thirty dollars an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Could you look back to the text of that bill real quick? Okay. I think it's open on another day. What did it say about something thirty dollars a month? Tipped employees, blah blah blah, who customarily regularly reads and tips directly from us. Not less than forty-five percent. So you get thirty dollars a month in tips. They don't. They don't have to pay you the full minimum wage. When you report your tips, <clears throat> they make you report your tips out here. Yeah. Right, but thirty dollars isn't a lot of tips. No, no, it's not at all. Okay, <laughs> delivery drivers for Domino's are now making forty-five percent times seven twenty-five. What do they make? But they make minimum plus plus tips. Oh, okay. They tips. make minimum when they're out delivering. When they're not delivering, they don't make minimum when they're out delivering. Oh, I thought they, they did. They are fucked over by the government. We need to talk about that next show. Get rid of it because it hurts everyone. All tip employees should be throwing with the rest of us. Okay. Uh, so let's finish the review here. Uh, does nothing about taxes. Should we change that to negative, or what are your thoughts on that, Tim? This is a bad uh, example to learn on, I think, because it's, uh, it's confusing. Uh, normally a bill will pass a, a regulation that will increase uh, costs for, for people. Um, 
then a pro-liberty bill might repeal some regulation that would have a positive impact. But since this particular regulation of the uh, increase of everyone's wages is confusing. Um, it was not confusing to me. Considerably you, negative impact in my opinion. You know, a lot of people don't know they're supposed to file because now they get double their wages. And they're dumb and shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, like, it will fuck over everybody. Yeah. Including the people who are, quote, getting a raise. Like, right, because the people now making $17 an hour, they might not be getting a pay raise. Yeah, if you make over so then, the wage, you know, it's basically to just below what you make, then you're a shit shoveler yourself. There's a psychological impact. Well, that argument right there um, is, is very good. It's kind uh, that of should, in a that should be world. something that you want to write down in the, in the uh, lower section because that's something that you want to argue to a committee. Like that, you know, all the people that are currently making this much now have to get a raise as well. So um, right now, in Why don't Why don't we just change it to low negative? Impact? Okay. I mean, that's kind of a compromise. So um, because even though people's wages will go up, I mean, it's still going to reduce jobs and so forth, so um, it's still going to be a negative uh, bill. Um, now, user fees, um, much better than a tax on everyone, I think everyone would agree. I mean, the road toll isn't um, perfect, but it's um, much better than a general tax on everyone for um, maintaining the roads. Um, it's a tax on the gasoline uh, that's used, so you're you know, generally much more libertarian, so um, that's something to take note of. We didn't select constitution, constitution <coughs> so we, skip, we can skip this box. And then are the pro-liberty talking points. These are bills that you're going to, um, or uh, points that you're going to make in front of the committee. Uh, in favor of a liberty bill or in this box uh, against an uh, uh, anti-liberty bill. So, or, was that confusing? I might have said it backwards. Um, anti-liberty talking points. These are the, the talking points that the anti-liberty people are going to be making. And you can add, it will fix everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It will fix everything Robertson forever is. until we decide it doesn't. And Robertson will be up there crying too the whole time. <laughs> I don't know why. So. No, not Chris though. Tim, Tim, right? Tim. Tim Robertson. He's, he's, a, he's the guy who sponsored this. Oh, he sponsored this? Let's see, it says the sponsor. Cheshire six. I had lunch with him at the uh, State House <coughs> last, last year. Last year, mm. was he at one of the debate debates now? Uh, yeah, he's the guy that was running against Keith and uh, started talking about you know his family from the area. And Keith was oh, like, yeah, yeah. "My family's been here for generations." <laughs> <laughs> he's a fun guy though, and he's good on pot. He's so. awesome on yeah. on drugs. Yeah. Uh, of all of the state reps in Keene. He's the only one that uh, arguably actually grew up here. Uh, his family moved right. here when he was four from Brattleboro. And he's 80 or something. Right? And he's like 80. <laughs> Everybody else moved here within like the last decade or two. Really? You should yeah, start a, a campaign you know, to uh, pop out. Cynthia Chase moved here same time Ian did. Yeah, all these, all these <laughs> outsiders, all this outside influence. usually Chuck no, this one was something. Uh, slimy so, so he's we already covered the don't touch issue, um, abortion, death penalty. Uh, oh, I've never seen that checkbox before. That must have just got added. I think it's been there. Um, it's kind of easy to, to miss. It's right at the end here. Uh, the report card candidate. The report card is is this uh, report here. Um, we don't grade the reps on every single bill, just on ones that are somehow exemplary. Um, yeah, so this, this should take them to an F. It's all, it's all, it's all D's. <laughs> right. Yeah, this is. 
Well, I mean, I'm serious about being nonpartisan, though. So if there's a bill on uh, social issues um, that's going to you know, liberalize the, uh, the social policy, that would be something we want to put on the report card, too, because mm -hmm. that will balance out um, the score uh, for Democrats. Yeah. Um, so that is the gold standard isn't just about fiscal issues. You know, we have a mix of social and fiscal. Um, anyone can mark it as interesting by uh, an HLA member. Maybe if you had some questions, uh, unanswered questions about the bill, you can just mark that. And, 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 uh, yeah, so in my reviewer notes, I put, as written, it's difficult to know if an employer would be able to pay the lesser of the two amounts mentioned, or if the minimum wage is the larger of the two numbers. I presume the sponsor of the bill would interpret it as the latter and would like to be enforced as such, thus it's bad bill and anti-liberty. And then I put my initials that way in case anybody had a question of... Someone's going to be like, what the hell does DWP mean? You should sign it as no, so there are a lot of times when multiple people will review a bill and, you know, if everybody's putting little notes, it's helpful to know who's adding what note. Yeah, that's really helpful. Like in that portion, but not really just like that. Yeah. So, um, does he you have can... To, does he have to save it because we changed the... We, we, changed, we did we change changed something. something. Yeah, we didn't really um, need to change anything else. Sounds pretty good. There's some, some question about, um, about victimhood. Right, uh, rights to property. Victimhood and property. Uh, and then we could also add that to the review if we wanted to. Uh, this is pretty good. Um, this is obviously, I think most libertarians uh, recognize this is uh, all, the, all the arguments for this. But it might be good to spend some time um, getting into the head of the, people, the proponents of this bill so that we can counter them in committee testimony. And you, there's no limit in space here, so you can really flesh this out. And um, if it's going to have a big impact, it might, it might be worth going back and adding something there. So, uh, so you just click on Submit. And it just takes you back to this screen. Now, you're going to want to go back and see what the score was. So, go to reviewed bills and just search for that bill number. It, it looks like it took it down. It took it down. Yeah. Was it like 23 or something? It was negative 22.5. So, what did, yeah. what did it change? Change it to low negative. So, that's that pretty rapid. Uh, Low negative impact from none. Hmm. That's a pretty rapid um, uh, assessment. I thought that would have, that would have taken it down another couple points. Made it more negative. Kind of yeah. Computer-based assessment? Is that how it does it so fast? <coughs> yeah, there's a computer calculation. Yeah, there's just a oh. program. That, uh, it's not like someone is sitting on the other <laughs> side of the screen. <laughs> okay. Assigning them not um, That's cool. So that's that's the system in uh, a nutshell. Or what what can basic memberships do again? Just look at them. No, uh, you can uh, be a bill reviewer with a basic membership, but you have to um, ask for the uh, status to be changed. Um, so you can send me an email or uh, the membership director. There's um, introduction. I know this right now. I can't even on my tablet. I can't even. I've got the introduction and the help. That's why yeah, I can't going. even see the, the scores. Yeah, that's you won't you be used able to, to be you used to be able to used to be able to review. Yeah, you used to be able to see the score. Anyone used to be able to see the scores without even logging in. Hmm. Well, I know that they made some changes, and some changes aren't complete, as you can see. That mm. There's some glitches <laughs> as well. Um, on this page, the introduction page, you have a, a email for the membership director. Um, I don't know, we can look at that to see if maybe we could make the, the score more visible. Um, we don't want the actual bill review to be public um, because if it was factually incorrect or um, significantly biased, we necessarily want um, everyone to be able to see what the NHL is doing there. That that high impact button, or what it, you know, when you're reviewing it, um, mm -hmm. 
How, what is that gauged by? Just like how many people it affects and how greatly in the state? Yeah, that's how I would think of it. Like what the actual change would be when uh, the bill passes. Um, like there could be, like the, the bill that um, Ian testified in favor of, um, I think that only had a pro-liberty score of three. <laughs> it's such a, it's a great issue. I mean, it's, it's a perfect uh, demonstration of you know how the Liquor Commission is um, extending its uh, authority and regulating. Uh, it's, it's a great First Amendment issue as well. Uh, so it's a great pro-liberty bill, but um, its actual impact is very minor. I mean, so what it means is that a few hundred people will be able to buy a certain bottle of beer at the store. You know, so that's not a huge impact. As opposed to the one Dow just did, right? Right, increasing everyone's paycheck, $16 an hour, is going to be a big impact. Um, yeah. So, does someone want to try um, reviewing a bill? We can all work on it together. I don't think I want to type. Uh, maybe someone else wants to type. Daryl, is the uh, uh, change the intent bill up here? Uh, that's going to be added as an amendment to another bill. Uh, that bill has a hearing Tuesday. Uh, so I'm going to call Kathleen Hosel tomorrow and make sure that she gets the amendment added. But wasn't that an amendment as well, the adding the 16 to the recur... Uh, no, no, no. So, uh, yeah, all bills amend statute. Right. But there's not an actual bill to do what we're wanting. So she's going to add an amendment to another bill that's related to warrant articles. Right. So that's not going to be right now something that we could agree. Okay. So, but after Tuesday, that'll that'll pop up, or uh, if it gets adopted as an amendment, then the current bill's wording will change. Right. Which would mean that that bill needs to be re-reviewed. Yeah, and the updated bill will be available in the system, but um, I suppose if you wanted to go and look at the bill's docket, if you haven't navigated the general court website very much, um, this is where you'd find it. So if you just want to look at all of the bills, and then let's just pick one. Yeah, this one had a hearing the other day. Limiting the capabilities of wireless communication devices. So this was introduced um, on the 7th at the public hearing and the 